This video was made possible by sponsors like you. Thank you for supporting us on Patreon. Oh great. As much as I love Scooby-Doo, it's creepy monsters and goofy shenanigans. They've had some stupid mysteries and stupider monsters. Stubborner isn't even a ward. I don't need your sass, Vanilla! I'm already dealing with listing the top 10 worst Scooby-Doo monsters of Scooby-Doo Where Are You? We're talking about monsters with the stupidest motives, abilities, and especially design. But if you like these monsters or think there are worse out there, dear viewer, then please leave your comments below. So leave me alone, Vanilla! Fine, I'll leave you alone as you start your list of the top 10 worst Scooby-Doo monsters from Scooby-Doo Where Are You? You stole my title drop. The Snow Ghost from That Snow Ghost, or the Yeti Ghost, because that's what it is. Apparently a real Yeti chased this Tibetan man and fell to his death in his hilariously cartoonish death. I think that perfectly encapsulates why I love how freaking silly this monster is. He's got these priceless caterpillar eyebrows, and unlike most monsters, he is throwing everything at the game to scare them off so he can smuggle diamonds and such, yet he constantly screws up. He comes off like the wily e. coyote of Scooby monsters. The snow goes every attempt to be a threatening monster is hilariously undercut by his own ceaseless stupidity. The best has got to be the scenes of him floating everywhere with his, get this, transparent skis. This seems so ridiculous, I even looked it up and found this totally not doctored video of someone skiing with invisible skis, so that's legit science right there. What's beyond priceless though, is if the culprit didn't even mention the snow ghost, then Mystery Inc. won't even have stuck around to solve a mystery, as they were only stopping by this hotel for the night to just rest while on vacation. So between the doofy design and his low intelligence, you got two halves of a whole idiot when it comes to the snow ghost. Oh, have I got a headache! The ghost of Elias Kingston from What the Hex is Going On. Here we got one of the many creeper clone designs. Yeah, you might be surprised, or not, whichever to learn that Hanna Barbera reused the Creeper design for quite a few of their monsters in the early days, including Blue Creeper here, Elias Kingston. Elias here though, is a grade A weenie. That is the best way to describe this ghost. Elias tries to scare Mr. Ink off all to get his family fortune. He'll chase them with guard dogs, flying tables, blowing air at them, and sometimes chasing them. He is supposed to be a bit more of a threat as his power is that he can rapidly age people until they decay, but in execution Elias acts and talks more like he's constantly bamboozled, and it's just funny to see a guy who clearly sucks at his job. <laughs> Suck at his job. He's almost cute in how dumb he is, and to top it off with his googly eyes and how he goes full Cesar Romero and paints his entire face including his blue beard to disguise himself. Credit however credit is due. This creature must have been a fan favorite though, because in Be Cool Scooby-Doo, the first baddie they face is none other than the ghost of Elias Kingston. The weeniness lives on. The Ghost of Mr. Hyde from Nowhere to Hide. We all remember how the Creeper is one of the most classic monsters from Scooby-Doo, right? Well, what if you put a hat on him? Bam! You got yourself an all-new monster. The Ghost of Hyde is the disguise of Dr. Jekyll. No, seriously, they set this up, and this could make for a great idea of Mystery Inc. dealing with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Instead, it's really straightforward. This moved on to the sky to start his career as a jewel thief after he failed miserably as a scientist. Now, if that seems like an idiot that makes bad life choices, it gets even better. Because even if the game didn't come along to catch him, his great thieving plans of hiding from the police in some random person's van as they drive away seemed destined to get him caught. It's here where the ghost find is at his most clever after his idiocy. 
As after his mess up where he brought a gang of detectives to his door, he fabricates evidence to try and have his maid take the fall for him, and it did fool the gang. Too bad he left his suction cups out in the fruit bowl which he used as Mr. Hyde to scale walls. Ah, of course, out in the open, the perfect place to hide them. When it comes to being a dumb monster and an even dumber thief, look no further than the ghost of Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Why do I even get up in the morning sometimes? Minor 49er from Mind Your Own Business. Now, 49er is apparently a fan favorite of Scooby Doo. He was granted the privilege to be farted on a live action movie after all. But Minor 49er's design doesn't even look remotely spectral. He looks like some old guy with a great big bushy beard. A great big bushy beard! If you saw this decrepit old foreigner in his black vest and low hat, I don't think fear is what you'd feel, unless he had, I don't know, like a pickaxe or shovel, maybe. That'd be a bit threatening. No matter how much the inexplicable lightning storm tries to make him so. Plus, his go-to move is just to go, ugh. At this point, Mr. Inc. is just being chased by an elderly person. His motives aren't much better, as old Hank here's plan was to scare people off so he could buy the land cheap and make bank off the oil he found in the gold mine. Or, you know, he could have worked with his well-meaning partner, co-own the town together, and make a handsome profit. Take this level of greed, design, and sheer stupidity, and you got Miner 49er. The caveman from Scooby's Night was a frozen fright. He's a caveman. Got a club, does typical caveman things at a marine biology center. You think the obvious idea for a monster by a marina would be some sort of sea creature, but um, no. The culprit's plan is remarkable with him first freezing the caveman costume in a block of ice, pushing into the sea so it can wash up on the beach, so that someone can bring it to the marina so that he can thaw it, and once thawed, pose of the dethawed caveman to kidnap his partner and himself. This is all so that he can lie and say he escaped the caveman to steal his partner's invention that can talk to fish and sell it for millions. The idea is so hilariously elaborate so the monster has got to be a big presence to really captivate on the silliness of the plan, but really the caveman is just sort of bland, only chasing the game around and swinging his club. He doesn't have a signature laugh or even a setting that makes sense for him. For such a really stupid over the top plan, just watch this dum dum get bit on the bum bum. That's the brilliance of the caveman. The Wax Phantom from Don't Fool with a Phantom. A monster used for embezzling is tradition for Scooby Doo, even apparently in their first ever series. But why did we end up the season on such a sad looking and sounding monster? The Wax Phantom is kind of like a mixture of the ineptitude of the great blue ghost of Elias Kingston and the physique of the tar monster, albeit more frumpy and sad looking. Big globby monsters can and have been great monsters for Scooby Doo, and Elias Kingston was enjoyable for how inept he was. So why is the Wax Phantom just drained of all that character and just comes across drier and more morose? His creator, Mr. Grigsby, is far creepier in just a few minutes we have with him than the Wax Phantom is the whole runtime of the episode. Not to mention, he's remarkably open about his malice towards others for a change of pace. So, they didn't believe in the foolish old wax maker's black magic, eh, Wax Phantom? <laughs> and he's even another doppelganger of the creeper design. He's just a color-swapped Elias. This is a mystery where the red herring is a more interesting monster than the monster itself. So, we're stuck with a frumpy, fatty wax phantom instead. We're sorry, Mr. Phantom, but here, have some fruit. <laughs> the Ape Man from Never Ape and Ape Man. This... This is a gorilla. J just a gorilla. There's not anything that makes him an ape man. 
You could argue the caveman from earlier is closer to an ape man than this gorilla. Because this, this is a gorilla. Yeah, it's freaky being chased around by a big gorilla, but it's also weird how this guy, apart from the one scene that fits acting monstrous like a gorilla, is sort of just bumbling around, hiding amongst the stage, just watching the game and miming Scooby. It's like the gorilla from Boo Brothers, that chestnut of a movie. Then we just got the ape man preparing a Scooby mask, which fits over his ape mask that just continue the mining with Scooby. That is dedication to his ape man ways, but maybe not the best use of his time. Maybe he should take the time to avoid getting his picture taken with his mask off. That's just a rookie mistake there. So you got a lame monster in appeal and worse off still, he gets the poop beat out of him by Scooby. But worst of all, this is clearly just a gorilla and not an ape man. The Indian Witch Doctor from Decoy for Dognapper. This is a weird monster, let alone a weird episode. And mind you, this is Scooter, where are you? Everything is weird. But this one stands out as just a bit bizarre. It opens up on a sunny day. We watch regular thugs kidnapping dogs. And then seeing the mysterious Indian Witch Doctor just talk to his thugs. I got him, boss. So you got Miller's great team. Good work, Mike. Let's have a look. Isn't the whole point of Scooby-Doo that as viewers we see the monster as being real, thus start wondering how it will be fake by the end? Yet here we are on Front Street before the woo scary scene. We see a normal dude in a ridiculously goofy looking mask and then they show us the woo scary scene. You can't put the genie back in the bottle after you showed your hand. We know it's some doofus in a mask. It definitely puts the Indian witch doctor already at a disadvantage creepy wise. After that bumble, it's all downhill. His tech uses a projector to make holographic Native Americans to appear on horseback. Projectors we never see or set up as a clue. Usually, the 1969 Scooby-Doo mysteries pull us into the story of how and why the monster is committing their crimes, rather than the who, as it's fairly obvious. We now already know the how and why from the start, so all we got is the who, and who this monster is, is just very awkward. Like this whole episode, it has not aged well when it comes to depicting the Indian Witch Doctor. <laughs> the Phony Phantom from the Haunted House Hang-Up. Do I really need to explain why this sucks? He's just some buffoon in overalls wearing a sheet over his head. What makes less sense is he uses an axe and swings away at random pillars in search of treasure. So why don't he just dress up like an axe-wielding maniac, cut out the middleman? It's so weird how a monster this stupid is in the same episode with the Headless Spectre. Somehow one of the best monsters and one of the worst are in the same episode. Simply put, when it comes to the Charlie Brown of Scooby-Doo monsters, look no further than the phony Phantom. For you, snoopers. There is no version of events where you would have gotten away with this, ya mook. The Ghost Werewolf from Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Werewolf. We've had werewolves before in Scooby-Doo, but this design is a fusion dance between the werewolf look and the snot green design of the creeper. That crackerjack design that must have broken the mold for Scooby given how many times they used it. And the Ghost Werewolf's master plan? Sheep Rustling, and his name? Unnamed Sheep Hustler. That's how good this monster is. They couldn't even bother to crack a phone book and pick names at random to get this character identity. The episode doesn't even have a proper setup. Mystery Inc. bumbles into a graveyard and boo, ghost werewolf. Random clues are dropped and you got no idea where it's going, then big reveal. Right on the random, emphasis on the dumb, is the ghost werewolf who is part of a sheep rustling ring. It's one thing when the gang outsmarts the monster chasing them, that's the point of the franchise. It's another level of ineptitude when not only is the mystery not set up, but also that the monster is treated like a gag to the extreme. At one point, the ghost werewolf's head is shaved by Shaggy and Scooby, and they keep him shaved bald for the remainder of the episode. Brownie points for continuity, I'll say that much. There are inept, silly, stupid, dumb, boring, and just plain bad monsters. This list compiled them all ever so neatly for you. But even at their worst, there is nothing like this. Mind you, the concept of a wolfman who died and his ghost came back to haunt people is cool, 
But when it comes to the cream of the worst crop, the ghost werewolf has just paused down the worst monster from Scooby-Doo, where are you? It's the werewolf! Help! Save me! He sure doesn't sound much like a werewolf anymore. Thank you for watching Toon Green's Top 10. Those were some dumb monsters, but there are so many more to talk about. What are the ones you think are the worst? Leave your choices in the comments below, and let me know if you want to hear more of the worst monsters from Scooby-Doo's other shows. But please subscribe and hit the notification bell, following us on social, and you can support us by Patreon or T Public. Links are in the description below. And as always, be sure to tune in to Toon Grin. <laughs>